Hey guys, what's up? It's Ham. I'm back with another video. Um, so this video was recorded at the same time as part 14 and it's really bad because there's still a lot of static and I just wanted to make this little prompt so you guys aren't confused and that way I'm not jumping right into the video and I wanted to thank you guys so much for being patient for me and supporting me all this way you guys have no idea with just the amount of like stress and like lack of time that I've had and <laughs> sanity that I've lost but at the same time it has been such an amazing journey this past couple months I'm so thankful I'm so thankful I can just share this with you guys and we are so close to finishing oh my god I can just taste that oh yeah but um anyway yes enjoy the video and um there is more stuff coming soon i promise thank you guys again love you we're gonna use this the rest of this video to get into some uh kind of overall mechanical stuff like um just nitty gritty stuff like uh the time of the stage the the pause screen as well as a couple of sound effects I still have yet to do this the fireball script, which I need to do the fireball movement parabola or vector based movement projectile motion based movement that I need to do, and I did that. I just don't know what happened. Hmm. Okay. So. Hmm. Let's do this. Let's. Let's say we're going to learn how to pause this this screen. So I would hate to attach another component to our player, but mm, why not? Eh. Yeah, I'll attach it to the player. Why not? So we're gonna call this pause. We're gonna call this pause, and here what we're gonna do is just open up the new script if you have Windows Studio available you can easily change this from the overall asset folder to put in the script subfolder but since I'm sure some of you don't I'm going to go into back to unity and go to the overall assets folder put this in the subfolder called scripts and it's simply as easy as that now Windows is going to let Visual Studios know that something has changed. We're going to reload. It's going to ask to change the ending. Thing has been changed effectively, and now we're going to open up the pause script. And here we're going to just go on and do some more. So what we're going to do here is say that hmm not pause sorry sorry we're gonna make a public static boolean called game pause granted we're not gonna have multiple instances of this class going around but we do want just in case there's some overall bug that I'm not seeing just in case there's some like logic based error that I'm having we don't want game pause to be changed otherwise and if it is changed we want it to be changed everywhere not just for the a particular instance of our player because we might have multiple players and with multiple pause screens scripts and we never know because we could add like a two player functionality to this game or you could do something like that, but hey, I'm not quite sure, so I'm just going to make it static. And, excuse me, when incorporating it with other scripts or being able to access it from other scripts, it's syntax is not as heavy, so that's always nice, but at the same time, heavy syntax kind of, eh, 
it has its advantages. Sometimes you know what's being stated. Sometimes it just looks like spaghetti. But what we're going to do is go on and define a public game object called player. And we're going to make a rigid body to variable that's going to be private but accessible. So what we're going to do here is in a private Well, honestly, we don't even need this. And we don't even need the player game object. So, what we're going to do is call a start function and say, uh, we don't even need the start function, sorry. I'm still tr stuck in the, let's use, let's define everything. Okay, we're going to call an update function and here we're gonna say if the input dot get key well uh, let's say get key down key code uh, P for pause sound good um, game paused equals the opposite of the game paused so the exclamation operator in front of a boolean variable just means that it is going to be um, we're assigning the game paused variable to what it is currently not so if it's true it's going to be become false if it's false it's going to become true and from there we're going to say if game paused equal equals true because we're going to check for equivalency. So equals equals true. We're going to say that the current rate of time, the current rate of time that is passing the time, the scale of time is zero. So time dot time scale, time scale equals zero, which means that basically all the time across unity will stop and this is perfect for wanting to if you have anything running off of time which most of everything is like all your all your functions using time dot delta time all your recursive stuff it's gonna stop until you state otherwise so time dot time scale equals zero and then we're going to say else time dot time scale equals one and that just returns the, t the passage the flow of time back to normal so basically if game pause equals true then time scale equals zero which will cause things to stop if not it equals one so uh, and so we can have some way of measuring that. What I'm going to do is create a new... Every level of Super Mario has a timer. So let's go ahead and get that going. So and we're going to switch back to Unity real quick. In our score manager object, you can barely see it. And I feel really bad because malware bytes is in the way. But yeah. So, in the hierarchy, we're just going to go to a score manager object, and we're going to make a new level time. New level time script. Call it that, or whatever you wish. And we're going to re reload this. And what I'm going to do is define the script first, then I'll put it in its place. I uh, know I should be uniform throughout. So what I'm going to do is save this, close this, go to the assets folder and drag the level time script to the script subfolder. Okay, since that is done, go back to Visual Studios, reload the level time script, and pull it back up yes 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 and then here what we're gonna do is say okay 
So I think every level uh, gets like some odd number. It's like 396 seconds. Here, let me double check real quick. Okay, okay, that's uh, me being unorthodox on my part. We're going to set the public float, can't spell, level time equal to 400 seconds, not 396. We're then going to say that the... Um, gonna make a update a call to the update function okay something is weird here we're gonna say level time minus equals time dot delta time time yep. so time Hmm, something funky is going on. I hate it when Visual Studios does this. Delta time. It's like I have to define everything. Intellisense doesn't get that intelligent. So let's go to print. And we're going to just print level time. And see the changes being made and from here okay I think I see the problem I really should move stuff in the proper folders before I drag them into new folders because I have two instances of level time one that has nothing on it it's actually in the right folder and one that's not in the right folder that probably has everything that we've written so far so let me delete the incorrect one hmm. and you might have the same problems who knows I'm pretty good at confusing people so sorry if I have confused you Okay, now that, that script is finally deleted, what we're going to do is go to our assets, level time, open, okay, that's the script that we want, drag that to the proper folder, go back, go to scripts, just in case, go to our score manager, and see the script associated with it, it hasn't been adjusted, so... Drag that to the score manager and press play. What should happen is we should. No, we do not. Oh, sorry. Not Windows. Hmm. Open up. Visual Studios, go to the level time script. Let's see whatever is the matter.
blueprint, level time. Things seem to be okay now, but I'm not quite sure. Ah, we attached the wrong script. We attached the pause script instead of the level time script. So here we're just going to drag the level time script to the score manager. And yeah, if you can look really closely, itty 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 bitty bitty numbers on the console view, you can see that we have, let's collapse this are the time is changing but it is in a float value and we cannot see that on the screen so what I'm going to do now is go to our canvas go to the text rename this score text and actually name this uh, let's go here change the text to Mario And then let's say vertical overflow, let's say overflow, let's say center alignment, let's say horizontal overflow, overflow, best fit. And then let's open up the score manager script real quick and let's say Mario. Slash new line plus score and then we're going to go to the a level time and then we're going to go back to our libraries and namespace dependencies and say unity engine dot UI and from here to find that we're using a text component and I'm going to call that text and then now we're going to use a star function and say in the start function that text is equal to get component dot text and so what we're going to do is here say that text now equals time backslash in I'm oh, sorry I think that's a forward slash that is a forward slash so we're gonna say time forward slash in whatever side is on the ground that's the name it takes okay, I think that it's how it goes. I could be backwards. I don't know. I'm going to do that certain style in. That slash in. And if it's the wrong slash, you just simply go in and try the other and it works. Or until it works. Oh. And then we're going to say uh, time. Oh, sorry. Level time. But on one condition. So you cannot inexplicitly convert string to UI.text. Mm. We're going to typecast this float to an int. That way it we won't get the, the double and decimal values. So what we're going to say is int here. We say parentheses, open parentheses, int, close parentheses, level time, and then here say, hmm. oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. So we have to say text dot text equals time backslash in, or f I can't remember what type slash in, plus int 
typecasting the float value and level time into an integer. That way it just rounds to the nearest whole number. Dump so smoothly. And then what we're going to do here is say uh, we're going to duplicate score text. Just control D, duplicate score text, and say time text. Rename this to time text. And then from there, we're going to change the text entry to time. I uh, have the usual. And then we're going to go to the canvas, go to the score, hold W, shift, then just drag this across the screen till. Uh, not even across screen, just to go out right there. Then we're going to press plus just to see what's happening. Hmm. Oh, so these both contain the score manager script, so that's the big no. Let's get rid of the score manager script on the time script. And then we're going to just change and attach the level time script and get rid of the level script on the score manager and as you can see the time is working and changing and if we press P the time stops Okay, so one thing I am not liking is that this is not working. So what I'm going to do is get rid of the pause script on the score manager and assign that to the player. Oh, I had two instances of the pause script. So that could be why it's not working. So go to pause the score manager again and press that in the player and it's already there. So that is why it's not working. Press the pause script. The time stops. It holds at 3.99. I go. The thing is, whenever I press the whenever I wish to move I don't know if you saw that there whenever I wish to move and I'm moving and I press the pause screen I stop in the current frame of animation and I keep continuing in the direction of travel and with, that is not a very convincing pause screen so what I'm going to do here is we made the static public variable for a reason we're going to make use of that so we're going to go to our handy dandy player controller script that we have not seen in like not even an episode and a half but it's been like nearly three months so we're gonna go here and in that we're gonna say okay we're gonna say a couple things so in our update function we're gonna say if uh, pause dot game paused equals true 
then we want a couple things to happen. We don't want velocity. We want velocity to stop, but currently enter. I mean, but currently just just temporarily pause. We don't want it to set it to zero because if we do that, then the direction that we're going will let's say if we're jumping and the player press pauses, pauses and then unpauses. It's going to lose the momentum of its jump. So don't want that to happen. And same. Same goes with our um, movement variable, our movement function, where we pass in a vector of travel and direction. I mean, you could. It's totally up to you. Uh, basically, I mean, we can pass zero into this, and absolutely nothing will happen. So the player will still continue. So I want to show you that if that happens, if the pause dot game pause happens, and the movement is going to equal the true. I mean, we're going to pass in vector 3.02 movement, and then we're going to see what happens. So, okay. We press pause while jumping, and yes, it works. And we continue going up with our momentum, and that's why we did not want to set the velocity equal to zero once that happens. So if we, although this is the real test, we continue to go, but what's happening? Hey, we set the movement, we pass into the movement function that our vector, that, our move, that the direction we want to go to is nothing, zero. But that doesn't play that way because we have this public, or we have this globally accessible float value, float variable called speed and that determines a lot more than we initially thought so what we're going to do is set speed equal to zero and that's going to solve all of our problems so here we're going to walk we're going to go we're going to do it and yeah it just stops you stop at 398 seconds perfect animation just nothing we go here we jump a few times we're jumping there's no movement, I'm pressing different buttons. Yeah. Okay. Yep, 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 yep. So yeah, that, that handles that works quite nicely. Works quite nicely indeed. So I think that is gonna be all for this episode. I'm also um, I was also planning to do a couple of sound effects stuff and a couple of music things, but we also need to do the fire flowers and, uh, player death, and also the, really, the longest thing that's going to take is the animations and setting all the prefabs and sprites into the right position and getting their functionality down back, um, that, that's literally, we're nearly 90, I would say, I want to say it's going to take about five more episodes, but that's if I painstakingly place every single sprite and prefab for you guys, or if I just say, here's the map, let's see what you can do by yourself, then maybe I'll do something, but at the same time, it's like really time consuming, <sighs> excuse me. It's time consuming in the fact that uh, it's just kind of annoying um, going and setting every single prefab and then your project's going to vary from mine even if you follow it to the T because of just version inf issues. I don't know what's going on in your machine. You may not be able to access this information and sprites and packages that I've left for you. So yeah, but anyway. Um, yeah, we're really close. We're really close. Closer than you think. And closer than I thought, too. And I was just like, oh, God. I really need to finish this thing. It's been over a year. But at the same time, um, I'm just like, I'm so close. But, yes, we will finish. And we will finish strong. Uh, just give me a couple more weeks. So, yeah, definitely. Thank you again for watching. Hopefully you enjoy this. This has been episode 14, and I will have this accurately uh, 
depicted in the GitHub as such, and hopefully not goof up with any merging of branches. I'll just stay away from the hard line for a while and just GUI, GUI my way out of it. Um, yeah, and expect a couple more things. I've been live streaming a couple things lately. Uh, even though the quality was a little bad. And then I also plan on doing a, a blog or a vlog of my GDC experience, which was amazing, but exhausting. But anyway, yeah, save your scene, save your scene, save your scene. And um, I hope to see you guys. I hope to tutorial you guys with you guys a little later. Um, yeah, I'm hoping to do some really cool stuff. Getting to some possibly like building our own game engines and like uh, very simple, simple game engines. Or just, you know, like shaders and interesting stuff. So. Yeah. Without further ado, let's 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 just end there before, like I promised the world and barely even deliver this YouTube tutorial series. So, yeah. Anyway, thank you guys so much, and uh, I hope that I did not confuse you. I'll definitely try to zoom in to make this a little more enjoyable. But you guys, take care.